Hey guys, this is NPC Cora back at it again with another video, and today we're playing Bang and Rope and Trigger Happy Havoc. Last episode, I think it was the post Sayaka trial episode. Um, we kind of just walked around and talked to people. I don't really remember. Oh no! Um, last episode we came up. There, there was a new victim. Um, if you missed last few episodes, you should go check that out. I'll link it in the description below. Definitely go check that out before you watch this because there's gonna be some heavy spoilers. But if you're ready, let's just get into it. Right, so, there is a new victim, and it's Chiaki. Uh, not Ch wait, Chihiro, regrettably. But now, pay attention to the wall. Huh? I said it once already. There's a word written there. On the wall. Oh, okay. The word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. I don't think it's any kind of dying message. It's just too strange. But you know, the thing about writing bloodlust in blood, doesn't that sound kind of familiar? A murderous fiend who kills again and again using bizarre and brutal method. And at the scene of each crime, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly and then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give this give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the murderous fiend who whose grisly attacks were famous all across the country. The murderous the the, mur the what the ultimate murderous fiend creating a reputation of abnormal downright cruel killings. Then this is some copycat killer trying to imitate genocide Jack style. But why would anyone do that? Perhaps it is the work of genocide Jack. What? The real wait are you saying genocide Jack is here in the school? No There's no way. But as far as writing blunders at the scene, I'm surprised at their stupidity. I can't imagine a worse situation than dealing with a stupid murderer. <laughs> what is it now? Toko. Hina was pointing towards the entrance of the girls' locker room. Ah, ah. Toko was the last to arrive and now she was just standing there. No, why? 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 Oh, she fucking died. Oh, wait. She fainted. That did not sound good. Toko. Hina rushed over to the collapsed Toko and started to try and shake her awake. Toko, are you okay? Come on, wake up! Oh, that's right, I just remember what she said about how she faints anytime she sees blood. So she's hemophobic. I'd imagine she does not watch too many horror films then. This isn't a violation of rules, right? I mean, technically she passed out somewhere besides her room. No, I think it should be okay. The regulations prohibit sleeping, like, on purpose. Ah, so since she didn't faint on purpose, it doesn't count. Gotcha! Toko, can you hear me? Hey, you gotta wake up! As if she'd he heard her, Toko sh suddenly shot awake. As in, she literally jumped up from where she was laying. It was such a strange reaction, I was at a total loss for words. She leapt straight up into the air, chaining her stance as she did. In no time flat, she was just standing up. Ignoring the physics contortions she had just gone- she had to go through, her emotions were totally ha has half reserved. What? What? Sorry about that, I was just so shocked, you know? It happens, right? Was I the only one? Toko, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. Oh, is she Genocide Jack now? Whoa, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? Oh shit. She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning, I mean she sounds completely different. No, 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 everything's fine, at least the stutter's all gone. That's a good thing, right? It's clear to me that everything is not fine, your eyes seem strangely vacant. It might be best if we take her back to her room for the time being. I don't mind taking her, but could someone help me? If you need help, I don't mind. Taka, could you help me? Huh? She totally ignored me! <laughs> Very well. You take care of the girl and the rest of us can begin the investigation right away. Can I assume nobody has a problem leaving Sakura and Mondo on guard duty again? Hold on a second. Rushing into an investigation? The mastermind isn't behind that. After what happened last time, surely you realize that. There is no question that Shihiro was murdered by someone among us. Hmm. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Oh, fuck. Right as rain! But don't take it as a bad thing, it's just a fact of life. Because that's how graduation works! Oh, jeez. Then it happened again. Is that what you're saying? That another one of us... Another one of, one of us killed a fellow classmate? Hmm. What? Does that freak you out? You got no balls, you know that. Is there just nothing down there at all? Well, I'll let you pray to mine what you want, if you want. Actually, I don't have any either, sorry! <laughs> what the fuck? Stop monologuing and give us what you came here to give us. You did bring it, right? 
I sure did, chum. Allow me to present the next Monokuma file. I know how much you must be looking forward to it. So please do your very, very tippy top best on, on this investigation. On this investigation. Do we really got to do another investigation? Examining the corpse of one of our friends. Having to suspect all of our other friends. Why? I hate this. I can't take it anymore. I hate it too. I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. Where do you plan on going? There's nowhere to run. Just accept it already. After all, blood is just a liquid. A dead body is a simple object. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you are very enthusiastic about all this, are you not? Naturally. How can one not be? If we what? How can I not be? If we don't amass the culprit, we all die. That's true, but to jump into it so soon. What do you want to die? Fine then. Go off and die somewhere. Right now. Go ahead. You're a waste of space. A dead body is an object. Shahira wasn't an object. Show a little respect or I'll beat some into you. Calm down. Everyone stop bickering. Listen, there's some truth in what Biaki has said. Kyoko, if we don't solve the mystery and find the killer, our own lives are forfeit. And if Biaki is right that Genocide Jack is somehow the one who killed Shahira, right. then unless we do something, more victims can start piling up. Forget more victims. If we mess this up, we're all dead meat. Hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. If that's your worry, you don't gotta worry any longer. In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. <laughs> what? I don't remember any rule like that. Actually, I just came up with it. <laughs> I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, our lovely student life would all be over, right? A new rule has been added to the regulations. In that case, why not limit it to one person? Well, in a good mystery, you don't want to miss out on at least the potential of a serial killer angle. This one would totally murder that possibility. Very well for now, I'll catch you guys at the class trial. I can't say I understand his thinking, but if we can kill up to two people, then one more person's life would could still be in danger. <laughs> Which is definitely not good. We need to uncover the culprit before something else happens. <laughs> you need to shut the fuck up! Well, for now, Taka and me are gonna drop Toko off at her room. Nice, I'm gonna get dropped off! We have no time to stand around here. We must begin our investigation too sweet. If we do not solve the mystery of who killed Chihiro, then we will quickly follow her into the afterlife. Oh my god. That's true. I hate this, but I want to su if I want to survive, me and everyone else, we have to do it. We don't have any other choice. Investigate. First of all, I better check the Monokuma file to see exactly what's going on. The victim was Chihiro Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. The body was discovered in the girls' locker room on the second floor of the school. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. That's all it says. Well, it's not like there's any point in complaining about it. No matter what, I gotta do what I gotta do. Monokuma file 2 is actually- Okay. Alright. Hey, Bokoto, do you have a second? Are you gonna give me more psychological trauma? Do you need something from me? Naturally. Of course. Life without purpose is quite dull, you know. Um, so what do you need? I'm gonna let you cooperate with me during my investigation! Huh? What? I'm purchasing your talent. The same talent which allowed you to solve Sayaka's case. Solve? No, I just- you seem to have some limited use, which is why I've chosen you. You have the honor of contributing to my investigation. So, you're inviting me to come with you. You're doing it in the most arrogant way possible, though. Let's go. Now then, shall we get started? But, we need to get moving. There's no time to be standing around. I don't really know what just happened, but it looks like I'll be working with Biaki on this one. Yay! We get to work with Bitch Boy! Okay, so one thing I noticed about this scene, um, while in that, like, talking thing is that this there's an F on this this poster. The poster's got some blood on it. It must have happened during the murder. Oh, it's not an F, it's just a random splatter. That's very coincidental. F in the chat. There's a dumbbell on the floor and this is a blood stain. There's a blood stain on the dumbbell. Hmm. The monocuba file said a blow to the head with a blunt object is what killed her. Does that mean this dumbbell was actually the murder weapon? I don't imagine it could have been anything else. Oh damn. Locker room dumbbell. Just pick it up and you know See who can pick it up. Just have everyone test who can pick it up, and then we'll then we'll narrow it narrow it down like a lot. <laughs> there's a there's a fresh blood stain on the carpet. It must have been splattered with blood during the murder. I can feel the life draining out of my own body. It's a dead body. Jahira's dead body. But the more I look at it, the strange the more strange it seems. This must be genocide Jack's handiwork. Well, but what? But we're still not sure he did it. Is that what you want to say? I wonder about that. The word, the word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. What's the meaning behind it, bloodlust? We could ask Toko. Um, hi Sakura. 
I use this locker room all the time. Now it's become the site of Shahira's death. Why was she killed in the locker room? Actually, if you think about it, she could have been killed somewhere else than carried here. She was a very light. That is true. It wouldn't be hard for someone to carry her, but still. I still think she came here on her own by choice. What makes you say that? She'd be talking a lot lately about how she wanted to get stronger. So you're saying she came here to exercise. But according to the Monokuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Would she really have been exercising that late? Hina or myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she was probably avoiding it then. Avoiding it. Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up. So I can only assume she was trying to avoid us. And instead, she came to exercise in the middle of the night? Perhaps, but it's difficult for me to imagine she would have come alone. She did want to start exercising, but she specifically mentioned she couldn't do it by herself. She needed support from others. So you're saying she could have come here in the middle of the night to train in secret, but that she would have... She... What? But that she also would have come with someone else. It's a possibility, I think. Oh, cool! It's an account. Nice. Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard, you heard your heroes talk about it, right? All I need to get... All I need to get stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't that strong. I don't know, man. I haven't really thought about that stuff. The cause of Chihiro's complex. Can't help but wonder what it might be. Oh. What does Wanda's account even say? She wanted to get stronger. Now I believe it's about time for us to move on. Huh? Already? New clues won't magically appear by standing around here. We need to check every aspect of this case. That's true, but... Let's go. If you're satisfied, let's hurry up and proceed. He's so pushy. I get caught up with the wrong person this I got caught up with the wrong person this time. You're right about that, man. So this is our next location. Huh? This place is related to the investigation? Figure it out yourself. It's no fun if you don't do it right. Ah, uh, I guess the door. If I remember right, this card reader is meant to work with our handbooks, right? What? Do you have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, and then quickly sh What? He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? Oh my god! Has he been domesticated? That's right. It seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need something? Sure, what's up? Oh well, it's just about this card reader. Yep. Yes, the card reader- The card readers have all been designed to interface with each of your e-handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. And it's impossible for uh, and it's impossible for two people in the in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? If there were some sort of erotic terrorist on the prowl, <laughs> the ceiling mounted Gatling gun would initiate a Swiss cheese slaughter. Oh my god. Then the school and then the school regul what? and the school regulations prohibit anyone from leading someone else to lending someone else the handbook, correct? Of Correctly correct. So then that means only girls can go to the girls' locker room, and only boys can go to the boys' locker room. In other words, Chihiro's body being found in the girls' locker room means... Hey Makoto, I can see right through you. See you right through me? Allow me to tell you, you what you were thinking. Since Chihiro was found in the girls' locker room, the killer must have been able to get in there. As such, the killer must have been one of the girls. Did I get it right? Good lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. <laughs> oh, I would expect nothing less from the prod, prod, from the prodigal son of the noble Togami family. So you managed to sniff out the loophole in the regulations. <laughs> Knowing you, I would bet you created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little more excitement to things. You treated me like a puny, like a what? You treated me like a puny, puny little appetizer instead of the main course that I am. Now then, since the dead can't actually talk, they're not people around anymore. They're things. Yeah. Get it? Got it? Good. Wait, hold on. You're saying that's a loophole, but in order to borrow someone else's handbook, then it means someone would have to, would have to loan it. So, Why you? so sleepy. Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like Biaka and get your poop together, or else I'll charge you with criminal negligence. No more questions. Figure it. Figure out the rest on your own damn self. Well. I know you are unfortunately lacking in mental facilities, so I'll fill you in myself. Let's head to the main hall. The main hall? That'll help you understand what's going on. Oh, that was actually the one thing I had to investigate in here. Interesting. We came to the main hall. So what are we looking for here? Does that mean I have to figure it out for myself? Um... Is it the giant door? Box? There's a mailbox here. Could there be something inside? It's an e-handbook. 
No wait, there's three of them, but what are they doing here? So you finally found them. Huh? Did you know these were here, Byakuya? I happened to find them by chance myself the other day. It seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students gets delivered to this mailbox. So then there's three handbooks belong to Junko, Leon, and Sayaka. Hmm. You can go ahead and confirm it yourself. I immediately turned on one of the handbooks and when I did... Sayaka Maizono. You're right, this is Sayaka's handbook. Hmm. Now do you understand? This is the key to the loophole I revealed earlier. Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to get it. You should pay closer attention to the regulations the answers in front of you. Uh, yeah, we went through this. Only an act of learning how it is prohibited by someone else is perfectly fine. I see. Yeah, now I understand. Main hall e handbooks has been added to the to section of your handbook. Hold on a second. Well, what's wrong? Very strange. That's strange. One of the handbooks won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Junko's name when I started it up. And the, then the one that won't turn on must be Leon's, right? It would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Pummeled with baseballs. Right. The memory of it came flooding back. That cruel punishment which led to Leon's death. The execution that the mastermind concocted. A cruel, heartless death. You're right, I wouldn't be surprised for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Damn it. Hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey! Hey! What? That e-handbook is essential to student life here. Crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal. There's no way it would break that easily. But it did. If I say it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break. It can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure, and it's waterproof to up to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseballs you hit with it, it wouldn't do crap. Oh, but uh, even my amazing handbooks does have one single weak point. It does. But it's a secret! I won't want you to go breaking any more handbooks! Then Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hard to say. You know what I'm thinking? I think his handbook isn't actually broken. But you might ask, how could that be? Leaving the question hanging in the air, Monokuma disappeared. Wow. Okay. What just happened? Monokuma said it's not broken, but it's an undeniable fact that it's not turning on. Well, I don't see any connection to the case, so it doesn't matter for now. You think so? Either way, something about it still bothers me. Broken e handbook. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay then. This should be enough to get things rolling. Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the true culprit. Yeah, we might find out who killed we to find out who killed Chihiro. To be exact, not quite. Huh? Not quite. What the fuck? Okay. Where do we go? I guess we can leave. Hold on, there's no more here it's waiting to be checked. Oh, okay. What do you mean by that, Byakia? To be exact, not quite. Certainly I want to reveal Shihiro's killer, but more precisely, I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Then you really think- you truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that killed Shihiro? Don't make me Absolutely. I have no doubt that Genocide Jack is the culprit of this case. That murderous fiend is Genocide Jack, right? There's no one else it could be. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly and then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. They say he's killed thousands of people, but that's gotta be an urban legend. Still, could one of us really be demented and psych- What? Could one of us really be a demented psychotic killer like that? You're not wrong to wonder. But words mean little right now. I have something that will prove it, and I could show you. And I have a basis to believe that I assure you Genocide Jack may be one of us. Is there really proof? There's somewhere I'd like to take you. This will prove all the evidence you need. All clear. Evidence that Genocide Jack is the one that killed your hero. Evidence? Does something like that really... Ah, hey, you two! Big trouble, need your help! I don't have time. We're busy, leave us alone. But it's an emergency! Emergency! Come on, please, you gotta help me! What's up? This is a serious emergency! Please, please, you gotta help! Just calm down, okay, Hina? But it's an emergency! What? An emergency? What happened? Wow. Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she's act she was acting pretty strange earlier, right? What should we do, Byakuya? Since it's Toko, I must admit I'm intrigued. I suppose we could take a second to see what's going on with her. Are you sure? Don't make me repeat myself. Okay. I didn't expect that. I thought for sure you'd just say no and that'd be the end of it. Yeah. Okay, okay, come on, hurry! Wait for us, Hina. Looks like she's headed to the dorms, to Toko's room most likely. You're right. Slash TV. You guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. So what's the emergency? Well, after what happened in the girls' locker room, we left Toko in her room so she could lay down. 
After a while, we came back to check on her, you know, see how she was doing, but then when we did, it was weird. She refused to come out and kept saying all this weird stuff. Weird stuff. We should try talking to her ourselves. Yeah, good idea. Okay. Hey, Toko. Come on out. I have Bitch Boy with me. I know you like him so very much. The door swung open slowly and silently. Hi. Holy crap. An aura of negativity flowed up from behind the door, forcing a gasp out of me. Oh, uh, nothing. It's just that... Hina was really worried about you, pulling yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But, could you open up, just for a second? Won't, huh? You won't let Genocide Jack have control! A what? She just outed herself right there. And just like that, she slammed the door in my face. What was that? She's been acting like that the whole time. When I rang a little while ago. I'll drive out the killer. Drive out the murderous fiend. It doesn't make any sense, right? I was afraid to leave her there alone, so I tried to bust down her door. But it felt like something was holding it shut on the other side. It couldn't even budge it. Toka was scared even to even bar her door. Does she think the same thing as Byakuya? Does she think the serial killer genocide Jack really murdered Chihiro? Is that why Toka was so scared? Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. Isn't there anyone who might be able to persuade her? Probably Byakuya. Hey Byakuya, you think you could ask her? To come out of her room, I mean. That's fine. Sure, whatever. Huh? You're gonna talk to her, Byakuya? Wow, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Byakuya stood in front of her door, not making a sound, and pressed the doorbell. Ding dong. After a few moments. Bakula. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. What promise? And without the door slammed shut. Even Byakia couldn't pull it off. There's nothing else we could do. Let's get back to the investigation. Hold on. Hey Byakia, what was Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? Hmm? Oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. But, if I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Alright. Without warning for waiting for a reply, Byakuya sped away. Byakuya! And I hurried to catch up. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked, but he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. He just kept on walking towards his destination. Oh my god, are you playing Danganronpa? <laughs> Dang it, Grandpa. Dang, yeah. Yeah, I'm playing Dang and Who, Whose Grandpa is Dang it? <laughs> Chihiro. Oh! Oh! <laughs> you're on- Oh! Finally, his feet brought him to stop in the center of a certain room. What room? Oh, the library? The library! Come on, let's go in. Do, 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 do. What are we doing in here? Um, is the evidence that proves it was Genocide Jack really in the library? Don't make me repeat myself. Okay. If I remember on the other side of the store, it's the archive, right? Hurry up and go inside. Oh, here? Let's go. It all makes sense once you're inside. Oh, there's so many books and files. So much dust too. So in other words I would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust. So many files stuffed onto the shelf. What's in all these things? Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truths for a common. You mean like members of the Diet or something? No, I mean the others. The ones with real power. The secret council controlling everything from the shadows. If you're ready to be disappeared- what? If you're ready to be disappeared for it, take a look. There's some very interesting people in there. You're just kidding, right? Am I? I'll just let it go for now. There's a wooden box. It's empty. Although, judging from the smudges on the dust, it looks like there was something inside. I wonder what it was. There was an extension cord plugged in in there. It proved very useful while I was in the library. An extension cord, huh? The shelf is stuffed tight with files. Without really thinking about it, I picked one at random. Ah, you have a sharp eye indeed to select that file. Huh? That's the report on a presidential assass assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It won't be a it won't what it won't be declassified for another thirty years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? There's no telling whose crosshair you might wind up in for peeking at it. 
Without making a sound, I return the file to the shelf. There's a ton of thick file stuffed out of the bookshelf. If you're thinking of looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filled with graphic, disturbing photos and all kinds of crime scenes. It's the kind of thing any normal person wouldn't want to ever look at. Be careful. What do you mean? All of those files are investigation reports related to different cold cases. Those are international documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of thing you'd expect to leak. Oh. Isn't that what we're looking for? Or not? If you pay attention to your surroundings, you're sure to discover that value for yourself. I'm trying! It's not working! I don't know where- I, I can't find anything. Huh? It's a desk lamp. Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Byakuya using in the library before. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before and then I moved it over there. It was too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. Hmm. So, are you finally beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? The entire reason I was interested in the library is because of this room right here. <laughs> it's home to the classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? This can't be for real, right? Such That's ignorant. your guys' problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it as a lie. Well, it's not that, it's just it's not like I totally refuse to believe it, but I mean there's just so much. How could anyone have put, up, put all this together? <laughs> I suppose it goes to show just how much hope speak truly wields, or perhaps the mass of mine may have wanted to pr provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Um, it's no use, I can't keep up with all this, it's just too unreal. <laughs> What's wrong? You still can't believe it. What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like these are usually impossible. What? What do you mean, usually? Usual, normal, ordinary, simple? Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you don't understand what they actually represent, you won't understand the nature of anything. You don't pull your punches, do you? Besides, what you consider usual is what. Besides, what you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? What makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? <laughs> the documents gathered here are genuine, and I have to, I have reviewed them with multiple times, so there is no doubt. Hold on a sec. You're saying you've read all these documents more than once? But all this has like top secret confidential stuff, right? Why? <laughs> My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Huh? Hmm. Members of the Togami family have, have access to any variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So, in other words... I already told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> my family is a member of that council, and I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. <laughs> but to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, I like to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim without a doubt that the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Bianca is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. And what always interests me the most were the cold cases police the cold case police re investigation reports. Reading through those reports has always been a hobby of mine ever since I was little. It's excellent mental exercise. I've solved more than a few of those cases just by reviewing the reports. And among all those reports, reports, one of my f recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. As you talk, Byakuya grabs a specific file for the shelf. That's right. This is the complete case file. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack case has been compiled in here. Hmm. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin, there are two notable, notable characteristics of every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that every crime scene, at every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. Bloodlust is written in blood and the victim's body is suspended. That's exactly the same as what happened to Shihiro. <laughs> Save your surprise, the best part is yet to come. Hmm. For the second characteristic where the victims are suspended, the only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Huh? Hmm. In other words, no one in the news, no one online, nobody knew about that aspect of every crime. Only key officials and the killer himself knew about the, this act of mounting the victim. Hmm. Now, if you recall Chihiro's corpse, hmm. her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. So how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? That's right. That's the key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. So in other the culprit words, isn't a copycat killer. It's the real genocide jack. Oh shit. In other words... That's right. There is... What? That right there is evidence that genocide jack has hidden himself among the rest of us. Then Genocide Jack really is such a brutal and fiendish killer really is walking among us. <laughs> interesting. Things are really starting to get interesting, are they? I never imagined a killer with such a reputation would ever become part of our little game. Don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at whatever I've already seen? 
you might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. Such if you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. Um, Biaki, I've got the genocide Jack case file. Could you let me see it? That's fine. Well, you didn't beg, but I guess it's okay this time. Feel free to look in here, but you can't take it with you. Murder cases of genocide Jack, top secret. Biaki, I handed me the file and I flipped through it with tense, nervous fingers. Suddenly, my hand stopped. I had reached the page where photos from the scene of each crime had been collected. Oh, fuck. The names of genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages. Ken Har Harada, 32. Tetsuhiro Honda, 17. Shoji Gaku, 23. Kano Ise, 14. Takashiji Yoshida, 30. Kamatsuna Taro, Takafumi Gono, Uchida Naohisa, Takashi Masamu Masamune, Yoto Yamajima, there is no end to it. But one thing became perfectly clear as I read. All the killers, countless victims, were killed and suspended in exactly the same way. And at the scene of every murder, the word bloodlust was left on the victim's own blood. Hmm. Now take a look at the next page, and you'll find another interesting tidbit. The next page. Profiling results. All the crimes took place either on weekdays at night or during holidays, either day or night. The most common time for the killings to take place was on, a hol was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could suggest that, this, that the suspect may be a student. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness was never has never because an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely there was any external reason for this. This confused behavior suggests that the suspect may potentially suffer from disassociative identity disorder. So, in other words, the key point here is that the culprit may well have a split personality. A split personality, like the kind of thing you see on TV, so I'm part of another totally unbelievable story. But this one is way more unbelievable than anything else up till now. Or maybe it really isn't. I don't know, I feel like my mind has gone up. Genocide Jack case file has been added to the truth list. Cool. Let's go. Alright, we should get going soon. Where are we going? Hmm. Anywhere but here. We've finished our business here, haven't we? Oh, wait, Biakia. This is so, like. <laughs> this is so stupid. He's just kind of like. Oh yes, yeah, you'll be my partner. Come over here and I'll show you a piece of evidence and then we'll go see another piece of evidence. It's not like, hey, you should investigate this. As usual, Biakia turned and left without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. <laughs> well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Huh? Just all of a sudden like that? I don't have time to play Come on, you. enough of your annoying mishap- mis apprehensions. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Okay, bye. Just like that he was gone. Just as quickly as he had asked me to join him, he cut me off. In the end, I felt like I was just some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I'd uncovered some really important clues thanks to him. Genocide Jack. He's the one that killed your hero. And that murderous fiend is one of us. He's one of us. But who is it I have to find out, no matter what it takes. And to do that, there's somewhere I have to go to investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene in the girls' locker room. I should check the boys' locker room, too. The others might have come up with some info I might find useful while I'm at it. I need to find out everything I can. Okay. Are they stupid? Like, do they not look at Toko and think, Hey, she's kind of- she's acting a little bit weird. We should- we should ask her about this stuff, right? Hi, Hifumi. Da, 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 da. Fumi has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if <laughs> another stat increased for me. Evidence, what did you find? Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that just yet, but I guarantee I'm that what sure I found will steal the killer's breath from from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Miss Ludabird said she'd witness something worthwhile too. Really? What did she see? Well, she refused to tell me. It it's like when the, when the girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Right? Okay, w w so where's the where's Celeste now? The warehouse by the door. She was there, but at the same time, not there. What's it got? What's it gonna be? <laughs> a what? I don't understand. Okay, everyone who is here is still here. Hey, Sakura. Damn. Shigeru's presence was here was especially weak. Her body and her soul. No to target such a helpless being is unforgivable. What a wretched beast to do such a thing. I cannot forgive this. I love Sakura, bro. Hey, Kyoko, have you made any progress on your Indeed. investigation? Generally speaking, however, but I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. Something besides the investigation. What is it? Well, nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But so then, before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should examine Chihiro's body one more time thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. With that, Kyoko turned and left the girls' locker room. I guess I'll take another look at the body then. 
And Chihiro's handbook is missing. That's definitely worth worrying about. Chihiro's e-handbook has been added to the- Oh, is that where that place Byake took us to like see the handbooks in the main hall? Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Chihiro's hands are bound What looks like with what looks like some kind of rope. The rope is used to prop her up like some kind of crucifix position. Huh? The rope has a plug. Wait, so then this isn't rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. Chihiro's fatal injury was a blow to the head, which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right. There's the issue of her being suspended in the fatal blow. At first, I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. But seeing them again after looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. What does all this mean? The status of the dead body has been added to the truthful section of your handbook. Well, the one thing most likely to tie all these mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Chih Chihiro. Figure out that there's a certain place I need to revisit to look over again. Plus, it might help to look at Genocide Jack's case file one more time. Suspected Genocide Jack victims include can all of these people. Um, they were killed at the same in the same way and mounted to a nearby wall. The word bloodlust was found at the scene of each crime written in blood. Profile indicates the killer is likely a student suffering from a split personality. The victim was Chihiro Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. The body was discovered in the girls' locker room, second floor of the school. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. The big breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable too. The girls' locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you'd find something like this. Huh, this poster. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys' locker room. Oh, but wait, that reminds me. The poster in the other locker room is... That's right, there's definitely something strange about this. The boys' locker room does a poster of a popular boy band. The girls' locker room does a poster of a big breasted swimsuit model. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe I should talk to someone who knows a little more about the locker rooms. There's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Okay. That, that was alright. There are a bunch of different pool-related items on the shelf, so there don't seem to be any kind of clues here. I got a coin. Nice. Donut holds any clues to the case. <laughs> I got a coin again. Hey, Sakura. You spent a lot of time exercising in the girls' locker room, right, Sayaka? Of course. Uh, Sakura? Sorry. I use it nearly every day since it opened up. Sometimes Hina and I use it together. Okay, then let me ask you something. Do you think the posters in the boys' and locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I never really paid any, atten any attention to the posters. I see. However... But there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a lot of protein... A, a little protein... Co a what? I like to drink a lot of... A little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. You have protein coffee? Mm. In the warehouse. It's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room and I left a stain. A stain? But I don't see any stain on the carpet of now. Exactly, I noticed it earlier. The stain has disappeared. can only assume someone came along and cleaned it up. But still, isn't it usually clean? Isn't it unusually clean as if there was never a stain here to begin with? Oh, so they switched the whole place around. Like, the carpet. There's a stain in the boys' locker room, so they switched the carpet and the, like... Interesting. Alright, let's go find Celeste in the dorms, in the dorm warehouse. Oh, Taka. Maybe we should have confessed our embarrassing secrets after all. Damn it, I'm sorry, Chihiro. It's all because I wasn't strong enough. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might distract you, but I see it was pointless. So did you find something? <laughs> Very well, I will tell you and only you. Actually. Last night I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. What, really? Indeed. This was right before nighttime. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I assume she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but... It would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girls' locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this would ever have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went to the girls' locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. 
But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the jack track jacket or duffel bag Celeste said she saw Chigiro carrying, which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Celeste's account. Okay, cool. Hina. Oh, Hina, how's Toko doing? Hmm. Same as before, she won't come out. She just keeps on mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so I just left her there. You left her? My head was all swimmy and I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah. Oh, but don't worry, I'm gonna head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? Huh? A donut, of course. Of course. <sighs> There's two things I'm sure God created. Outer space and donuts. Really? Hmm. I bet Shihiro would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. Aww. Maybe I should have tried to spend time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time with? Well... Yeah, she was a little bit strange. Didn't really hang out with... Hang out with... Uh, what? She, she didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said that even though you and her invited Shikira to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah, totally! Yep, it's true. And it wasn't just us, either. It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? Mm. I don't know, she talked to the boys all the time. Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex but totally fine with the opposite sex? Ah. Oh, wait, maybe. Maybe she was used to guys spoiling her. The law says you can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. <laughs> okay. Cool. It's gone. Did someone take it out of the archive? But the only one who would do something like that. Can't think of anyone but Byakuya. Someone took the Genocide Jack car uh, case? Oh, the lamp's out here now. Huh? The lamp won't turn on. Oh, I see. It's not plugged in. The lamp cord's not long enough to reach the outlet from here. The last time I saw it, it was definitely on. It was definitely right there. Oh, that's right. Byaki was using an extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Okay. Beginning of the class trial, or it's about to begin? Oh, shit. The red door is right here. here. Uh, okay. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode. Um, we did some heavy investigating, and I'm really sad that Chihiro was gone, because Chihiro is, like, one of the good characters that kind of kept everyone together. But, um, in I will upload the full uncut version of Chihiro's trial um, next time I decide to record Danganronpa. So if you want to see that, and you like this video, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!